It's the end of June 2019. This is the month that Riot Games Teamfight Tactics launched its beta as the game left the PBE servers and hordes of players fought to get in and play. For a week, top Hearthstone and League of Legends streamers abandoned their respective games and pushed TFT to number one on Twitch. The week before, Valve released Dota Underlords to a similarly massive 200,000 player count at launch. And the month before, Auto Chess, the Dota mod developed by Drodo Studios, celebrated an enormous count of 8 million players. This new genre, the Auto Battler, was clearly the new kid on the block and it was threatening to take over the entire gaming industry. But it didn't. And it quietly settled down in the following months, a shadow of its former self. Was the hype too much? Was the replay value too low? Was it ever fun at all? We're going to try and figure that out and see what exactly happened to the auto battler. The Auto Battler has its roots in Warcraft 3 and is based on an obscure mod called Pokemon Defense. During a game of Pokemon Defense, the goal is to catch and collect various Pokemon and watch them fight other neighboring Pokemon. This first iteration of the Auto Battler had some popularity, but it never achieved the same success that other Warcraft 3 mods like Tower Defense, Omni Party, and Dota All Stars did. Flash forward to January 2019 when a small team of four called Drodo, who were responsible for the hit Dota 2 game mode, GemTD, release a mod called Dota Auto Chess. Despite being mechanically similar to Pokemon Defense, in an interview with Sohu.com, the team claimed that their primary inspiration was actually Mahjong, drawing on the similar concepts of luck and set matching. For the uninitiated, Auto Chess pits you against seven other players fighting to be the last person alive. Throughout the game, you'll acquire units that you place on a tiled grid which will automatically fight your opponents or mobs. Each loss results in a loss of life, and once you lose all your life, you're out. Rinse and repeat until there's one player remaining, and that player is crowned the winner. Oh, that's why so much Hearthstones are playing, Hearthstone streamers are playing this game. Because you can blame everything on RNG. I was wondering why everyone was playing this game. Regardless of where Drodo got the idea from, compared to Pokemon Defense, this iteration of the game mode was far more polished. Auto Chess hit all the right notes with strategy players and exploded in popularity, quickly becoming the most popular custom game mode on the Dota 2 workshop. Card game esports players flocked to the title in droves, praising the game for its satisfying and strategic gameplay. The hotness spreading across the world, it's Dota Auto Chess. It is a very fun game, it's a very cool game. This, that was really fun though, holy crap. Despite the developers claiming that it was meant to be a casual experience and nothing more, tournaments started popping up, and the hype train grew ever stronger for Auto Chess. Suffice to say, this level of success for a mod is incredibly rare. By the end of February, the game had attracted more than 4 million players, and by May, that number was doubled. On March 15th, Drodo announced their partnership with Chinese mobile games developer Dragon Nest to release a standalone version of the mod. The assets and characters ripped from Dota were redone, but the game remained incredibly reminiscent of the original modded version. Around the end of May, in an unusual display of communication, Valve posted an update on the Dota 2 blog. Dota Auto Chess. In the post, Valve describes how impressed they were with the mod and its success, recounting how they invited the team to their offices for a possible collaboration on a standalone title. Ultimately though, they came to the conclusion that a collaborative effort would not happen, and, with each other's blessing, they will make their own standalone games separately, and Valve's new game would be titled Underlords. Three weeks after Valve's announcement, Riot Games published their own blog post, announcing a new game type for League of Legends called Teamfight Tactics. Riot unabashedly stated that they themselves wanted to build on the auto chess idea by using their own characters and concepts. Due to the popularity of League of Legends, this news was heard much louder than the announcement of Underlords, and the auto battler genre was pushed farther into the mainstream. To everyone's surprise, Valve, the company infamous for never meeting its deadlines, was the one to win the race to go live. Underlords released an open beta simultaneously with its mobile client on June 13th, 
2019. While the game was in an incredibly early state, with barebones menus and rankings, all of the gameplay components were there. Now that the title was being developed by Valve alone, they, much like Riot, took the auto chess idea and made it all their own, altering the gameplay significantly but keeping the core concepts intact. Not to be outdone by the competition, later that same week on June 18th, Riot Games released Teamfight Tactics to their public test servers. Underestimating the number of people that would be interested, anyone who tried to log in on June 18th was hit with a 9,000 person wait count, as the Riot servers crashed several times during the testing period and most players were unable to get in at all. But when a player did get into Teamfight Tactics, they were presented with a very different flavor of auto battler. TFT abandoned the standard square grid format and replaced it with a hexagonal one, which was a substantial change that affected how units moved around the board. The carousel was another mechanic unique to TFT, and apart from serving primarily as a catch-up mechanic, it also provided a time to directly interact and confront your opponents, potentially screwing them out of a unit that they needed. Teamfight Tactics made much bigger waves than its competitors, and while the games were more volatile and unpredictable, it was very well received. Uh, there's nothing that I like less about this game um, than auto chess. I'm very happy to see this type of genre move to League of Legends. And after talking to their balance team, I have a lot of faith that they're going to be able to do stuff well. The ease of transition for League of Legends streamers, being both the same IP and directly in the same client, allowed TFT to climb to the top of the Twitch charts when it first released. Streamers like Skara and Disguised Toast, who'd been burnt out from playing League of Legends, found a new home in Teamfight Tactics, and would soon become some of the most prominent figureheads in the community. This was when the auto battler was at its apex. Two of the biggest PC developers in the gaming industry were hard at work building their own take on the genre, and both managed to create distinct versions that reflected the philosophies of their respective parent games. TFT appealed to League of Legends fans, Underlords appealed to Dota 2 fans, and different players liked each game for different reasons. Teamfight Tactics sought to create an accessible, faster paced game with plenty of catch-up mechanics. While the item system is more random and the board size is smaller, it's built around the gameplay, which focuses on speed and overpowered builds. Dota Underlords is a bit slower and more methodical in strategy. Its consistent item distribution means, more often than not, the player with more game knowledge will usually end up on top. However, the emphasis on optimal builds can sometimes lead to stale and repetitive board states, a problem that has since seen many attempts at fixes throughout Underlord's lifespan. Even Drodo's standalone game, Auto Chess, has cemented its own place in the market. Never really aiming to be accessible or streamlined, the game appealed to fans of the original Dota mod, with layers of complex synergies and complicated item systems that were geared towards experienced players who are able to plan their moves far in advance. All three titles are still under active development, and thanks to the scale of gameplay and recycled assets from each company's respective MOBA, updates are frequent and usually very significant. Underlords, only finally leaving beta in February, has undergone significant core gameplay changes since its launch, with the developers constantly trying to figure out what works and even adding new game modes to change the formula further. Teamfight Tactics, on the other hand, has seen less drastic changes to its foundation, instead focusing most of the changes on the roster. Season 2 of TFT, dubbed Rise of the Elements, saw the entire set of units and synergies replaced adding a new element system that randomly infuses a hex on the board, granting bonuses to any units that start the round on it. Each title has been monetized in slightly different, but slightly the same ways as well. Both titles have a free battle pass system that unlocks player representation, boards, and further small cosmetics. But what's happened since? It would be safe to say that the genre is not the powerhouse it once was, and there are a couple of reasons for that. Firstly, Auto Chess, the Dota mod, was timed very well. In late 2018 and early 2019, strategy players were burned out on the current market offerings. Between the disappointment of Artifact and the lukewarm set reception of Hearthstone, there wasn't anything fresh to sink your teeth into, and Auto Chess was there to provide. But when Riot and Valve decided to cook up their own version of the concept, players started to get a little bit full, and started leaving for whatever the next new thing was, while the rest fragmented into Underlords and TFT. Secondly, the genre can start to feel slightly repetitive after a while, which is not something new, especially in a turn-based strategy game. With no mechanical skill to hone and master, being presented with only decisions, game after game, 
can start to feel stale after a very short time. To remedy this, both Riot and Valve have tried to shift around the pool of available units and synergies. TFT replaces their entire pool each season, while Underlords has a rotating selection. But despite their efforts, after the novelty of the auto battler wore off, a good number of players left the genre. But that's not to say that they're currently dead games. In fact, it's pretty far from it. In September of 2019, Riot reported that TFT had a regular monthly player count of 33 million, no doubt thanks to being embedded in the most popular PC game of all time. It's not hitting the same heights that it used to on Twitch unless a big streamer is involved, but nevertheless it proves that streamer metrics are not everything. Something else that gives the titles longevity is further investment into the mobile space. Thanks to the game being turn-based and not requiring high latency, it's a perfect fit for phones. Going against what most initially thought possible with their engine, Riot announced that in March they would be launching a beta of the TFT mobile client. It will join Underlords and Auto Chess to compete in a completely different playing field of mobile gaming. All of that aside, because both are helmed by titans of the industry, and because both are soft advertisement vehicles for League of Legends and Dota, nobody should be worried. It's very unlikely that development and support will stop anytime soon. Today, the auto battler remains a tour de force in the strategy genre. It doesn't hold the same popularity that it did when it was fresh, but it's quietly settled and is slowly becoming something much greater than its initial versions. Auto chess is a mod turned million dollar genre. Not the first time it's happened, and certainly not the last.